we're going to determine if two functions are inverses of each other. First, the definition of inverse functions. Two functions, f and g, are inverses if and only if. That means both of these need to be satisfied. Sometimes you'll see if and only if written like that. Um, so the two things that need to be satisfied are f o g of x has to equal x, and g o f of x also has to equal x. They both do. So let's look at these two functions, and let's see if they're actually inverses of each other. Before I start, I always like to write it out like this, and I'll show you why. So f of g of x equals, what this says is for my function f, wherever there's an x, I'm going to put in g of x. So when I write my f of x function out, I'm actually going to put a big space, a parentheses, for my x. Because remember, that's where g of x goes. So I'm going to put g of x in there. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. Well, these will cancel because 3 over 3 is 1. So I get x minus 2 plus 2. Well, negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0. So I do, in fact, get an x for f o g. But remember, they both have to be satisfied. So let's see if g o f also gives me an x. So once again, I start out like this. Now remember, in my function g, I'm going to put f of x in for all those x's. So I'm going to write my g of x, but remember, instead of writing x, I'm going to put a, put a big parentheses there. Because remember, f of x is going to go in there. So let's do that. Let's put f of x in there. Now I need to simplify. Since I'm not multiplying anything through here, I don't need these parentheses. So I'll end up with 3x plus 2 minus 2 all over 3. Well, plus 2 minus 2, those become 0. So I end up with 3x over 3. Well, 3 over 3 is 1, which gives me x. So this one is also satisfied. Since they both come out to equal x, that tells me that my functions f of x and g of x, these two functions, are actually inverses of each other.